are going to get that championship back by shaking hands, being best friends with the champion. No, I slapped him right in the stupid face. I slid out of the ring, and I let him know my intention from that point. Uh, he calls me down to the to ringside, and we're, we're starting to chat. He's just saying how I'm doing, all that. I'm just, and then at the very end, he's like, hey, you got a match. I was like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, yeah, you're going to have a match. I was like, that's not normal. Like, why, why? And he's like, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're, you'll be fine you're, you're gonna do good you're gonna wrestle Alistair Black it's gonna be it's gonna be great I was like all right cool yeah and now your hosts of the card subject to change podcast for frequency sake tag team champions of the world the wizard CZ and never wrong Nick Gold Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Card Subject to Change podcast, episode 108. It's amazing we've done this many of them. It just, they just fly by, and we've got another interesting guest, another interesting show this week as we come to you live from uh, the High View Lounge Studios, live from wherever CZ is recording. I am your host, <laughs> Never Wrong Nick Bull. We are powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and I am joined by my tag team partner, the we're co-champs of the of the network, correct? Correct. We correct. are the tag yes, team correct. champions of the For Frequency Sake Podcast Network. That's a lot. And Nick, I just, to spit out. That that's a that's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, Nick, I just want to start the show off by saying you tried to change my gimmick last week. Uh, management did not take to it, so the <laughs> wizard is here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I totally. I forgot about that for a hot minute. And now that <laughs> Wasn't it Mark? Mark Wizardson. Wizard? Mark Wizardson, Wizardson. that's right. I, for a hot minute, I forgot about it, you big time Mark Wizardson. Uh, well, we've got a guest this week, and we got daylight savings time upon us, so the Shadow Alpha can uh, rest up now and uh, do the podcast now so he can work later. Of course, joining us on the show is SCW Pro Star. That's how we know him, but we're going to learn more about him tonight. Augustus Draven. Augustus, thank you for joining us tonight. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm very happy to be here. We're, we're glad to have you here. It's uh, a voice we haven't had on this show, a uh, voice we really haven't heard from. So I'm very interested in, in hearing your story and, and, and how you got into this thing. But I'm going to start off the show by asking you the same question I ask every other, uh, one of our, our other guests, that is, excuse me, bleh. Why pro wrestling? What got you hooked? Why do you love it? Like, what what is it for you that gets you into pro wrestling? That got you into pro wrestling, I'm sorry. Oh, well, it just, I happened upon it as a kid, uh, just flipping through the channels, um, as was at the time. I think we're uh, losing the Augustus. We may be losing. I, uh... I hear you, CZ. I hope you can hear me. We maybe we lost Augustus. Augustus, if you can hear us, exit out real quick and join Whoa. right back in. We'll we'll get you back in here. There he is. There he hey. is. Hey. <laughs> Go ahead. We'll start off again. What got you into pro wrestling, Augustus? What got you hooked into this 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 thing we all love and enjoy? Yeah. So I was flipping through the channels as a kid, and mm -hmm. I came across. Uh, T TV wrestling. I just came across an episode of WWF. Bret Hart was uh, featured at the time, and I just something just grew and it hooked me in, and I never stopped. You know, I came close a couple of times as a fan, uh, but I, you know, I never stopped watching. Uh, it's, you know, it's just kind of hard to describe. We all like what we like, right? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, personal taste is not up for debate. Right. We're all allowed to like what we like. And uh, there's just uh, something about it that just got in me and never left. You know, so I, you know, I love it. It's the most consistent uh, entertainment form that I've you know, participated in over the course of my life. And just, um, you know, and I just came to respect it. So the older I got, I didn't grow out of it. Right. I got more. I 
got more dialed into it, right? Especially um, just every, I don't know, every year, but just every season of life, I've gotten more and more into it. And then when I was uh, a college student getting my bachelor's degree, I took a lot of film classes and you learn about kind of, you learn how the sausage is made, right? And that made me less of a film critic. It made me appreciate movies and television more. And I was just translating everything I was learning about film into wrestling, right? I also took a bunch of theater classes, right? And that gave me more an appreciation of wrestling, right? So from just being a fan and just being wowed by the action, the larger than life personalities, the pyro, the video packages, all that kind of just grabbed my attention and sucked me in as a kid. But then as I got older, the intricacies of it, the technicalities of it, uh, how everything was put together and produced, uh, a real appreciation of the art uh, really set in and uh, is maintained to this day. And then becoming a trained wrestler and then really learning how the sausage is made, right? That can kill your fandom. It does for some people, right? Uh, when you learn psychology, you learn the steps of a wrestling match, and it changes the way you watch wrestling, uh, some people can't be fans anymore, and they end up hating it, right? For me, it was the opposite. I just loved it even more. The more I learn about wrestling, uh, and the, you know, the more I'm able to, I'm not like, I don't have my ego so into it, right? So it's not like I don't watch wrestling. Like, well, if I'm not involved, if I'm not in the main event of WrestleMania, I hate it. That's not me at all. <laughs> right. So like, so learning the technicalities of it, learning all the intricacies of it um, and watching it differently. Now I don't watch wrestling. I'm still able to watch it as a fan, but I'm watching it very much like tape study, right? Like, uh, like football and basketball teams during the week, go and study tape for their next big game. Right. That's more how I watch wrestling now. Um, and I love it more because of that. Because now I'm learning more, right? As a fan, especially in the internet era, it's easy to think we know, right? We know everything. We're on the inside. We know the terms, et cetera. But becoming a trained wrestler really lets you know that you know nothing, right? And I'm big into philosophy and meditation and spirituality and stuff. So I'm all about learning that I know nothing and knowing that I know nothing and having a beginner's mind. And pro wrestling constantly provides an opportunity to have beginner's mind. There's so much to it. It's improv, it's theater, like I said, it's movies and TV, but it's also athletics. It's also sport. It takes extreme endurance. It takes strength. You have to be able to lift people and land them safely. So there's all these different things uh, involved with it that in – Every season of my life, I've grown to appreciate and love even more. I so love, I, I, I love how you bring up the fact that um, you saw how the sausage was made and talked about your film. You know, going through film and, and breaking and comparing it to wrestling like that. I, I just love it because, and then you added that thing there at the end where wrestling, wrestling is the great uniter. You could ask 20 different people in an audience what they're there to watch and why they're there to watch it, and you get 20 different answers, and nobody's wrong. Like, everybody is coming there for something different, but there it is, this great drama, this theater that's going on right before us, uniting everybody. I just love it. I love how you described it, and I love how you said, you know, you didn't change your opinion on after – after film or after wrestling, after it didn't sour you after you learned how the sausage was made. So I want to, I had a question in mind that I was going to ask you just right off the top of the show that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a more of an appreciation. Next, but, yeah. Uh, I kind of changed where I want to go here. You're talking about watching wrestling as a fan, but more like watching to learn from what you're watching. Let me ask you this. Obviously, you're watching current product. What's tripping your trigger right now? What do you gravitate towards the most that is helping you not only appreciate it as a fan, but kind of grow as your own wrestler, as yourself as a wrestler? So uh, currently right now, it's I'm 
it's the my favorite wrestlers of so it would be my personal favorite wrestlers of all time who are still active right so i am currently really watching them more with that worker's eye right so um like the wrestler the performer that gets me the most emotionally invested over the last year or two has been sting not a lot to study in terms of uh technique and stuff right now right but then the other end the other two people who probably get me the most emotionally invested would be christian cage and samoa joe and those two are a grand canyon of wealth of knowledge and learning a piece in what they do right i'm getting low level goosebumps just thinking about it because they are so good and i've been a fan of both of them for so long and i I really started dialing in and watching what they're doing i love that you bring up christian cage he is in the midst (laughs) of probably the greatest run of his career is he not and he just keeps getting better and better i've loved them for years yes they both do they're both neither of them are resting on their laurels consistently i i love it i that's a great those are two great i know nick and i spent a good deal talking about christian cage last week when we were talking about revolution and sting's last match you bring up sting as well uh so great names to bring up when you were growing up watching wrestling as a fan who did you gravitate towards i'm curious to bret see hart is my of... favorite wrestler of all time i don't even need you to go expand that bret hart is my favorite wrestler of all time <laughs> yes uh, it's a, and it's a distant number two right yeah so it's it's bret hart and i'm in uh, i'm in Shawn michaels country right i i go to the school of Shawn michael fans right so uh i very much am kind of a a lone wolf or a um a what is it the uh, a kind of a devil's advocate a voice of alternative on that, right? I'm, I am uh, surrounded by a wealth of, of Shawn Michaels fans, right? But uh, I will uh, always wave a flag for Brett the Hitman Hart and will give no inch, no quarter on his greatness, especially when it comes to studying as a, a trained wrestler, right? Because Bret Hart, what I'll tell the kids um, in the school, and I, you know, I live in the, the bunkhouse for the new students for Black and Brave, I tell them, Shawn Michaels, you know, as as a fan, especially coming up, forget the fandom, as a wrestler, right? Shawn Michaels is great, one of the greatest of all time, at the stuff that can't be studied, right? At the stuff that can't be learned, I say, right? Bret Hart is great at at all the stuff that you can learn and study and train, right? So, uh, but Bret Hart, like when I started watching, he was top dog, and that kind of ingrained in me that wrestling is what's up. You know what I mean? So like it always kind of looked and felt more like a real fight. And I guess that just, I kind of just gravitated to that. Right. So um, that kind of goes along with what I was saying of, I was just a fan of his. I just loved his style. He had style, right? His outfits, his entrance attire, the sunglasses, especially when he was champion, they would have him come out with pyro above him. But then just kind of watch, watching, re-watching over the years. Like, man, he is so good. And then coming and learning to be a wrestler, it's like, he's not good. He is great. He is a master of his craft. And looking at that stuff and studying his stuff just provides a wealth of, of knowledge and information and application to my own performances. Well, I'm sure glad we booked Augusta Straven on here because you are singing the you're singing the 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 song of Bret Hart, and I love to hear it. I love to hear somebody else come <laughs> on here and wax poetic about Bret. What uh, what got you hooked on Bret as a fan? What what is it about him? Is it just the fact that he is so polished at everything? He is the excellence of execution. So when I first started watching him, it was probably it was probably just how how cool he looked. He looks cool. You know what I mean? And especially you look at him. And I'll give, and I'll even tie in because Brent and Sean are just forever linked, right? They forever. just look different than the wrestlers that came before them, especially in WWF. You look at Hogan, yes. you yep. look at Macho Man, you look at, I mean, all of them. It was kind of the short tights, knee pads, boots, plain colors, right? Hogan wore the same attire for, you know, 10 years, right? Um, you know, Macho Man started mixing it up when he went, once he went to Macho King, right? But they just kind of look cool, right? They weren't just the plain tights, Ric Flair, great example, right? Great yep. wrestler, great robe, but again, it's just a pair of trunks 
a pair of knee pads, a pair of boots. He actually had some different colors, right? Um, but uh, for, as a kid, because I started as a kid, right? It's like seeing him like, whoa, that looks cool, especially seeing his entrance, right? Comes out with the leather jacket. Yep. The, the sunglasses were cool, you know? And then Shawn Michaels coming out with his, with his leather getup and his sunglasses. That was cool, you know what I mean? And they had, you know, a detailed attire, right? Uh, so from a kid, and then they changed it out too, right? So like stuff like that as a, as a kid is going to grab your attention, right? For sure, you can bring for it sure. to the modern era of John Cena every three months cycled out his hat, his shirt, his armband colors, right? And had a new logo and stuff. That type of stuff beyond just wanting to sell merch, it grabs your attention as a kid, right? Kids are, you know, they're, they're for simple, sure, right? Sure. Kids aren't, kids yeah. aren't thinking about work rate. You know what I mean? So, like, no. I wasn't, you know, <laughs> so especially as a kid, right? I'm watching like, whoa, that, that, that dude looks cool. And then it also helped, um, whether it's technically provisioned or not, Brett's stuff looked like it was a real fight or it looked more like it was a real fight. You know what I mean? Like oh, I know the way he, yeah. yeah, the way he got in there, the way he would sell and stuff like that. So as a kid, that kind of drew me in. Right. And that, and, um, and then you just compare that to Sean, right. Cause they were fighting each other. It seemed like every three months, you know, at least a few times a year, they were mixing it up on TV or pay-per-view back then. It's that then you compare it to Sean, who's all, who's kind of the dramatic, right? He's, he's going out, right? Where Brett's kind of selling in. So that th those two differences were just, it was kind of a complete package to just really suck me in, keep me watching, keep me interested and engaged and entertained. And you're talking about, you know, the differences between like the Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and say the Hogan and the Macho Man. For a long time, WWF, WWE was known as the Land of the Giants. And those two are not, compared to like a Hogan or an Andre, they're not really that big of a wrestler. So they had a different look to them physically as well as their attire. And I just love that comparison because they, they stood out because of that. Uh, let me ask you this, Augustus. What is your favorite Bret Hart match? What's what's a match you can go back and just never get tired of watching? I was at WrestleMania 13, my favorite match of all time. Yes! And I would say the greatest wrestling match of all time. <laughs> yes! Bret Hart versus Steve Austin, the I Quit. Yes. You know, yes. Love it. That's the greatest wrestling match of all time. Um, and it's my favorite match by a bullet. But I put that against Mania 25, right? I would like – I won't – I'm past the age of argument. Right. Um, but like the people that say Mania 25, it's not like I say they're wrong. I just think that, uh, first of all, it has more botches than people care to remember. And also it's essentially a lot of false finishes. Right. Which is great. Great for drama. But that Bret Hart, that Bret Hart, Steve Austin match looks like a real fight from start to finish. So Ken Shamrock is pulling Bret Hart off of Steve Austin's bloody limp body. Right, like that is a fight through the crowd. The whole it had everything. There's strikes, the weapon shot, the choking with the uh, extension cord. Right, like everything about that match feels like a real fight, and that's my preferred style for wrestling as a fan. Then and now, right? I like that. I like that stuff. Right, that's my preferred style of drama. Right, um, so that is definitely where I. Uh, I lean to, and I just, I just feel, I, I feel you can show that Mania 13 match to anyone and they're going to be like, it's going to make them think twice about pro wrestling. I don't think you can say that about, um, the Mania 25 match, right? I think that's going to kind of, people are going to kind of be like, oh, of course you're yeah. talking, you're talking about Triple H and you're talking about HBK and the Undertaker. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, because yep. that that's kind of been redconned as the greatest wrestling match of all time, uh, and I'm like I said, I'm the unapologetic Bret Hart uh, flag waver, right? <laughs> in the in the land of Shawn Michaels, right? Like I said, I'm in the I'm in the land of Shawn Michaels, so I always like to uh, uh, stick up for the uh, the excellence of execution. <laughs> I'll, t I'll tell you what, Augustus, I had a chance to meet Bret Hart a few months ago, and I don't want to spoil it for you but he is just as cool as you think he is. He's not a jerk. He's so cool and quiet and laid back. They, they say never to meet your heroes, but I'm glad I did because it was definitely one of those, one of those major moments for me to meet him. And after idolizing, I idolize him like you do. I'm sitting here waving a flag 
uh, for Bret Hart as much as I can. I love that Bret Hart Stone Cold match. He took the words right out of my mouth. And here we are. We're talking about the Bret Hart Stone Cold Street Fight from 13. We're talking about Taker, HBK from 25. Neither one of those were main events. Those were on the undercard. And that's how good those matches, you know, those matches get so much love. And they weren't even main events. Yeah, that's why pro wrestling's fun funny like that, right? Like yeah. there's there's what the there's and that's just the nature of entertainment. There's what the people in charge think the people like, and then there's what the people actually like. It's an art, not a science. Art and science are two totally different things, right? If it was a science, then there would ne- there would be a never ending boom period, right? If it was a science, it would be a never ending boom period, right? There never would have been a lull from Hogan to Austin. And there never would have been a lull from um, Austin to, I guess, where we're at now. They say we're in a boom period now, especially when it comes to live attendance, right? If it was right. a science, they would just sprinkle something out there, right? They'd go into their formula, put something out there, and there'd still be a combined, what, 8 to 10 million people watching every Monday, which is in the Monday Night Wars, right? You go to the peak Monday Night Wars, you yep. have like 8 to 10, 12 million people watching every week. Yeah, and then you go back to the 80s, right? You had how many people watching Andre and Hogan on the main event, right? So if it was a science, uh, the people in charge would just, you know, pro wrestling would be it, right? But it's an art. And so that's one of the things that makes it great is it truly is unpredictable, right? You can, and Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Bret Hart, Steve Austin, for the greatest of all time, you know they're not going to go out and stink the joint out, but there is some thinking that says, no, this shouldn't be the main event. This other thing should should be the main event, right? But it it just turned out on those given nights that those those two matches, those four performers were were the main event, right? They were head and shoulders the best performers for and, sure. Um, the unpredictability Absolutely. of pro wrestling is uh, part of the secret sauce. We are we are here talking with Augustus Draven of SCW Pro. You're it tuned into Card Subject to Change, powered by Lopez Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, and colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. Augustus, I wanna I wanna focus a little more on you and your career here. Talk about how Augustus Draven came to be, the evolution from when you started as a pro wrestler to who you present yourself as now in the ring. Well, so I've always been a so I I've only wrestled as Augustus Raven, right? So um, the, it's just mostly been um, tweaks, right, to the original model, right? Like you know, I brainstormed the name. I um, you know, the character presentation has it has only changed so much, right? Um, it's I've always uh, presented myself in a way that I would find entertaining as a fan, right? Like excuse me, um, I've always wanted to present a wrestler that I think is cool. And I do, right? Like, I think, I don't think I'm uh, better than, greater than, superior to, destined for, should get, should have already gotten. That's not me, right? But I do think my character is cool. I, I would be a fan of Augustus Raven, right? The way I've presented him from my first match uh, for Joey Grunge and Midwest Impact Pro five years ago, uh, through my time at Zawa to SCW and random matches across the country, um, I've always been a fan of the way I present my character. I think the character presentation is cool, um, and it's something that I would like, and that's something that I consistently have thought of and put effort into. Right? Like, um, and there's always room, and you have to evolve it. There's always room for improvement. Like, if you look at my first. No wrestler looks the same as they did from their first match to the most recent match they had, right? But it's only changed so much, right? Like, if you were to see, like, the face paint's changed a little, my hair's longer, I don't wrestle with a top on anymore. Um, But the genuine, if you were just to, you know, like, comb through my Instagram and, you know, go, like, all the way through, uh, go to the bottom, at Augusta Straven on Instagram, by the way. Um, If you were to go through the bottom, go all the way through, you're going to see a reasonably consistent um style right uh aesthetic presentation right and it's um it's meant to be kind of like a darker a darker character right i like to present it as uh an artist uh a philosopher an iconoclast an anarchist um 
you know, the character arc of the character was uh, a hippie turned a journalist turned an anarchist, right? That was kind of the original uh, way of uh, presenting the character. Something that I've uh, needed to do or want to do more of in terms of non-specific match promos. Uh, but that is the background of the character, right? The character is very much um, a jaded, you know, kind of permanent... It's a permanently angry character. The character is, is very angry, dark, brooding, but it comes uh, from a place of, you know, innocence and love, you know, peace, love, unity, respect, you know, kind of turned more into a uh, dark, angry, betrayed, violent, uh, you know, character. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love your social media presence. There's always something new and fresh coming out, whether you're, uh, whether you're cutting a promo on Instagram or just posting new photos with, with the, with your unique persona embedded into them. I love that, that online presence that you have. It's a lot of fun. Well, and I like, you. I Appreciate enjoy that. watching. Uh, I want to, I want to ask you, you talked about your first match and you mentioned Joey grunge. I want to, I want to bring things present. Talk about your debut last night at CEW. How was that? How did that feel? Oh, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot. It was a really good time there. That was a, that was a, a good show. It was a good crew, right? I made to feel very welcome the whole time. Um, great atmosphere backstage. The fan base, very good fan base. They were loud the whole the whole night. Um, very enthusiastic. A uh, lot of kids, right? Um, that would be um, the biggest difference between me as a fan and me as a performer is performing for children i as a fan i very much like the adult oriented stuff once mm -hmm. i hit a basically once i hit puberty right like i wanted the like my favorite wrestling promotion of all time is the original ecw right okay. so that's my jam right and that's also where i feel augustus raven would fit like a glove right that's what i aim augustus raven for is you can yeah. slide this guy in the original ecw good, uh, call. But as, good call but yeah. also as a performer i love performing for kids i love it Right. So if I'm not the first match, uh, I'll just listen to see if they're, you know, what what percentage do I hear is children out there? And I'm always happier to hear when they're when I hear a lot of kids. Right. Because they're <laughs> they're making noise. They're invested. It means I'm going to have to um, I don't want to say work less or not work as hard because that's not accurate. It's I can put more focus on the character stuff. Right. I'm a character wrestler. Right. I'm a character based heavyweight wrestler that, you know, so I prefer to have matches where I could maybe be less uh, move and spot oriented and put more of a priority on character work and character work is audience work. Right. And so CEW, Central Empire Wrestling, really gave me a, a great opportunity for that. Uh, got to work a singles match with Jared Thumb. Um, me and Jared, uh, that's, that's not the first time we've worked together. We worked together a few times. We always have good matches together. We kind of just have like a natural chemistry, me and him. Uh, always really easy putting our stuff together. Uh, it's uh, the total the total opposite of pulling teeth. It's, and we talking about this, talking about that. Um, he had some great suggestions on how to make the match better that when he said them, I was like, yeah, you're right. That's going to work. And then we did them out in the ring. And I was like, yeah, man, that just worked so much better. Got the crowd more hooked. Right. Um, so I had, I had a great time from start to finish. So I had my match with Jared Thumb. Then I came out later during the Damian Saint death dealer match uh, to establish a, a tag team with Damian Saint, um, who I get along with very well. Um, me and Dylan have known each other a couple years now. Uh, and we get along really well personally. Our characters get along uh, really well. It's a natural flow. Um, I remember saying to him and Death Dealer, uh, when they were like in their gear, I was still in my gear. I was like, I feel like we should be working together, right? Like, I don't know how some independent promoter doesn't see, of, see all of us. It's like, this should be a thing, right? But that's just the nature of, uh, of the beast of the entertainment business. Um, sure. So... But so and uh, I was received really well by the fans. Received really, really well in the locker room. Uh, it was a great time. I'm looking forward to be back. I should be back, I believe, 
on May the 4th, and I am looking forward to it. I had a, I had a great time. Looking forward to going back. Absolutely. Uh, you know, speaking of May the 4th, we're going to we're going to take a quick pause time out to pay some dues to our sponsors. Uh, but before we get to that, May the 4th, I want to talk to you about something that uh, all wrestling fans would enjoy uh, because of a certain aspect. There is a the uh, the Sandra Lee Memorial Car Show on May 4th in East Moline at the Rock Island County Fairgrounds. Uh, all wrestling fans would enjoy this because there's going to be Cowboy Bob Orton, The Godfather. Coco Beware, uh, Fred Ottman, otherwise known as Tugboat, the Shockmaster, Typhoon, uh, and a couple of others, the uh, the original Glow Girl Hollywood and USWA superstar Luke Graham Jr. will all be there. Uh, we're partnering. We're gonna we're gonna have a presence there, uh, walking around, talking with some of the wrestlers. So come out and see us there. Uh, if you want to register a car for the show, it's twenty dollars. Uh, but this is a charity show. All proceeds are going to the Autism Society of the Quad Cities, which is a very great charity. Uh, I wanted to make sure we plug that here. Uh, they are giving away a 12 by 12 autograph poster for $5 that is limited. There are only a handful of them. So if you want to get your hands on that. Uh, and Ricky Lee, the guy who's in charge, he, he also mentioned, wanted me to throw out there that they're still looking for vendors and sponsors. So uh, feel free to give him a call if you're interested at 309-292-6725. Uh, right now, we're going to take a quick break. Immediately on the other side of that break, we're going to check in with our weekly segment, A Moment of Focus with JT Energy, and then we'll be right back with Augustus Draven. Stay tuned. In just a couple minutes, we'll be back. Football season may be over, but for frequency's sake, still has you covered for all your sporting needs. Tune in every Sunday when the best professional wrestling podcast around, cards subject to change, gets you caught up on everything inside the ropes. They won't miss a count with weekly analysis and interviews. More into auto racing? We've got a double dose for you on the track. Tune in to Fast Money with Rod Villagomez each week and win some money with the quickest bets in all of sports. Want more insight from Pit Row? Check out the Green, White, and Checkered podcast where they give their insight on everything happening on and off the track. Need your basketball fix? Points in the Pain has you covered with live shows every other week looking at everything in the association. Back by popular demand, we have the return of The Payoff Pitch, FFSQC's baseball show, covering you on news around the MLB. If you're missing football, don't fret. Mark and Dan still have you covered in the football lounge. Missing Joe Winkle? Probably not, but he's still here talking sports on Educated Ignorance. Football season might be over, but we've still got you covered. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean. For frequency's sake is brought to you by Durham Remodeling, serving the Quad City area's remodeling and repair needs since 1973. Clint's Draft House, grab a bite and a pint. 7th Street Moline. Low Pies, New York-style pizza served up by the Slice or Pie, Davenport. Lifted Energy, energy drinks, coffee, donuts, and more. Hashtag get lifted. Atomic sports cards and collectibles. Sports cards and memorabilia, vintage clothing, hats, pennants, and more. Ryan Allison Tattoo. Step into the vibrant world of tattoos with Ryan Allison. And a cut above. Offering quality custom woodwork designed specifically around our customers. Ah, uh, welcome my friends, welcome to week three of A Moment of Focus with JT Energy, the feline phenom. A moment of focus. For the past two weeks, we've been focusing, but we can do better. And in your studio today is the Shadow Alpha, Augustus Draven, one of my former partners. And if there's one thing that I need you to focus on, focus. I need you to focus on what you don't know. Because what you don't know can hurt you. Welcome back to the show. Card Subject to Change podcast, powered by Lopez Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. We are the wrestling podcast for the fan, by the fan. We are joined this week by our special guest, Augustus Draven. And Augustus, you have had 
some sort of a past with uh, Mr. Focus there, JT Energy. Talk about your guys' time together in the Miss Night Society and also uh, a spot that went viral for you. Uh, I was in the house that night for the Weed Whacker spot where you uh, you decided to uh, do a little trim on the back of uh, JT Energy's shoulders. Yeah, twice. Oh, yeah, you so, guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so uh, that was my um, kind of like my foot in the door for SCW, uh, the Miss Night Society. They brought me in. Um, that was a great time, right? Like JT uh, was a just not just a tremendously help, tremendous help for me. Uh, just a, serving as a, a friend, as a tag partner, as a mentor. Uh, you know, I got I got nothing but love for for JT Energy. You know, as a as a performer, as a person, right? Um, you know, really would help helped me. Uh, you know understand some things again one of those things where i thought i knew something and then he kind of tells me well this is kind of what it is right and it's like oh wow yeah i need to think about that or and um you know making sure that i wasn't getting um making sure that i was getting time making sure that i was getting opportunities to showcase myself and to and to shine and to um get exposure out there right like uh put me in positions where fans could get emotionally invested in my character and want to see me again, right? Um, right. He was not selfish, right? He was a very selfless person, and uh, I enjoyed my time with that, uh, with him, and with the Miss Knight Society thoroughly. Um, you know, they um, it ended uh, abruptly, right? Like, I, I so first of all, the best wrestling, the best moment I've had as a performer was our breakup angle, right? And that's him, right? So, and that's that's him. Because the the mo the fans had five six years of uh, equity uh, built into him and emotional sure. investment in him, right? And the fact that we were able to command that entire room, right? It was it was just in Walcott, but Walcott could fit you know 150 people, 200 people sometimes, right? So we had you know over 100 people quite literally in the palm of our hand because he was signaling to them when to be quiet and when to make noise and that taught me viscerally what pro wrestling is really all about right and shane hollister was involved in that as well and obviously shane hollister you know is, is the top guy of scw pro whether he's a champion or not right so i have shane hollister and jt energy out there i just had to show up and not screw up right and uh luckily i'm i'm a good enough performer that i was able to to pull my weight in that in the breakup angle that we did uh which was just wonderful i mean just one of the best memories of my life and definitely uh, uh the highlight of my career up to this point just based on you know what i feel and what we're taught at black and brave and what pro wrestling is really about right moments right the things between the things right it's not the moves it's what it's the emotional investment it's the stories it's the characters right and that was the epitome of that uh, so then, um, you know, unfortunately, we weren't allowed to tell us a long story, which I would I would have much preferred if our what well, one and a half year um, uh, pairing was allowed to have was allowed to tell a story of a breakup. We just had one week, right? So we went into a one week, uh, one year blow off, uh, and he was of the mind that we needed to really heat it up that we needed to do something special uh to really um you know i guess make up for the fact that we weren't being given time right we were not being given time to tell a story we just had to get out there and have a, a street fight uh, and really get you know three months six months a year's worth of storytelling out in one hard shot and so the idea came uh, to do the weed whacker spot, and I said no repeatedly. I said no, oh god, at least five times, right? I said no on Messenger. I said no on text message. Um, I said no, I think on the phone, and it was um, crotch. It was Matt Mayday who uh, couldn't. I don't want to say convinced me. He put it in a way that made it make sense to do it. 
and it was you know just the way he the way he phrased the situation was like okay if he wants to do it then we should do it and so we did it and he was right you know uh and it wasn't that i didn't think it wouldn't work i just uh it you know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to hurt the guy. You know what I mean? And for sure, I didn't want. Sure. You know, I didn't want that on my conscience. Um, but I knew it would work. I, I'm old enough. I remember Sick Nick Mondo and White Beater at the original Tournament of Death. Right? That was a viral moment before there was such a thing. I remember finding that on Click Wrestle. I think was the name of it back in the day, and seeing a super pixelated video of uh, the rest of the character's name. The performer's name was White Beater. Uh, taking a weed whacker to the stomach of a performer named Sick Nick Mundo, um, and so Mundo still had those, still has those scars, right? He didn't wrestle much longer after that. That was the other thing. If I wasn't, if I didn't have memory of that and wasn't aware of that, I probably would have been more down for it initially. But you know, um, yeah, I was just, it was very much, it was the human thing that I was just like, man, uh, I don't know if I want to be you know, have that on my, have that on my conscience, but it was phrased like, yeah, but if I prevent him from having these moments that he wants to create, do you want that on your conscience? And I didn't. And ultimately it wasn't my body. Right. Uh, so we went through with it and it was, uh, insane. It was, you know, it was awesome. I mean, it was awesome. Cause like I said, I'm a, I'm an ECW guy. I'm a hardcore wrestling guy. You know, uh, I don't do, I'm only so so entertained by death matches, right? I definitely think they are more than played out, more than jump the shark. Um, but that's the type of stuff I like. It's when you just dip your toe in, right? It's when there's just a chair, a ladder, a garbage can, a table, a kendo stick, not 15 of everything, right? <laughs> One weed whack. You know what I mean? Like, you know, so like I like when it's like that allows you to use them storytelling and we very much use that as a storytelling device and it allowed us to hook the audience and create i was very uh happy that it came across the way we wanted it to come across and and then i was able to kind of do the things i wanted to do i was very adamant that the match had to start with the mist to the face right the mist night society Right. I thought it would be a great way to set the tone if I missed him in the face and blinded him. Right. And then I went up, but then gave him a shot to put him down. So now he's totally prone. He's totally essentially, he's essentially, you know, out there, you know, um, you know naked and afraid and helpless. Right. To whatever I want to do. You can't just pull out a weed whacker. Right. Why isn't he just going to run? Why isn't he just going to go pull out a weapon? You know what I mean? To defend right. himself. So, right. So like that, and that's the give and take, or the give and take, and the the creative synergy that I just live for. There's you know, there's nothing I like in life more than creative artistic synergy, right? That to me is what life is all about, right? Besides spending time with the people that you love and you know being with the most, right? Time well spent is how you have is what makes a good life, and that back and forth of putting that together where he was a little resistant to the mist at first, but then, uh, you know, Tony was like, well, if I missed you, you're blinded. If I hit you with the crowbar, you're already down. So when you're recovering and you're, you're, you're totally in the dark, you could be in a ring, you could be in a street, you could be in an alley, you don't know what the hell is going on, right? And the crowd is gonna be maybe reacting to that weed whacker sound. And so then when, when I run it past you, right, you don't know it's coming. You don't see it's coming, but the crowd does, right? So it just created just this essentially as close to perfect as you can get atmosphere, right? And it's the fact that I went in on him, right? That we, when we got to the building, that weed whacker had a guard on it. So I was like, oh, you son of a bitch, you worked me. You just want me to run this guard across your back. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna sell it I was like, why didn't you just tell me that i would have said yes immediately right it's wrestling right yeah of course i hit you with the weed whacker right didn't you see me run the guard across his back right and it's got the thing in there right and yeah. we could just cut it to be just short enough 
right? I say this to him. He holds the weed whacker up, takes the guard, and rips it off. <laughs> oh, that's- I was like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, yeah, we're we're going for it. You know, we're going all the way with it, right? And Let's do this. And, yeah, and he insisted on it, and then he insisted on it twice. He's like, you got to get it once, but then you got it, you know, you got to do it again because they might not. It just, um, he was, yeah, he, he he's like, that. the crowd is going to react to it. They're going to be so horrified. They're definitely not going to think you're going to do it again. And then when you do it again, they're just blown away. And then they are just very much eating out of our hands, which, which they were, which enabled us to tell the type of story that we needed to tell and wanted to tell because we weren't getting a full program. We weren't getting anything other than that one match. And so that one match had to serve its purpose of being a one match blow off for a one story angle, and then also had to elevate him to main event status, right? Um, which Shane Hollister did the heavy lifting on, but I had to kind of put him over uh, the hump on just getting there because his next step was to the main title, right? And so mm-hmm. I certainly can't go out there and not pull my weight. I can't go out there and shit the bed. I can't go out there and for people like, yeah, he hit him with a weed whacker and what and whatnot. But I mean, it was like JT was basically had to carry that guy's ass to get to the finish. And oh, now they're going to put him in a title match. It's like, no, coming out of that match, right? It was like, holy shit, what did we just see? <laughs> I haven't seen anything like that you know, in a long time. Many fans probably hadn't seen anything like that ever. And now all of a sudden, oh, now JT's moving on to the main title, right? Like, let's go, right? Let's, you know, now we're cooking. We're cooking with gas. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so that is I, – I, I wasn't there for it. I've seen the clips. I, I can't even imagine what it was like standing in that ring and hearing that crowd reaction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nick, I was there. Nick I remember. Was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Augustus, I want to I wanna ask you now, we've, we've talked about your past. Let's talk a little bit about your future. Uh, you've recently aligned yourself with Eric S. Knight and The Chosen. Talk about uh, – Talk about your your expectations and your hopes for being part of this uh, this group here, and what what that looks like for you going forward. Well, I get along great with Eric. I love Eric and Malik are just two great guys. Um, anytime they're at the gym, they're two of my favorite people to see at the gym. Uh, I love Eric's character. Like I said, I'm a character worker, right? I'm a character first worker. Eric's a character first worker, right? So we're. Um, very much kind of kindred spirits in that we both take our physical fitness seriously. We both uh, believe, right, uh, that the way we want to do wrestling for ourselves, not saying that that's the right way. It's not saying anyone else should do wrestling this way. We just believe for ourselves to be characters first, right? And there's some similarities in the characters. There's some similarities, you know, in um, more in the subtext, right? If you kind of look at the way we present ourselves. Right. Um, so, but it's, you know, so there's the similarities of professional character, but then there's the fact that we get along great. I love seeing Eric. And anytime I see him at black and brave, I love seeing Malik. Anytime he's at black and brave, um, they've been, you know, a very a positive influence on, uh, on our community and our culture. And I like his stuff. And I like, you know, um, Eric's really, every time, he gets better every time him and Emily, they get better every time. Right. And those are the type of people I like being around. And, um, but if I didn't think that we could make, we could make great art, I, you know, I don't know if I would have been down for it. Um, but when it was presented, you know, I just wanted to make sure I was still wrestling. Right. So, um, I know they had a bodyguard, wasn't able to do much wrestling. Um, and now he's stepping away for a little while. Uh, so I just I just wanted to make it clear that I need to be wrestling, right? So my concern was still on having matches, and as long as I'm going to be an active wrestler, I'm 100% down for it, right? If I'm just going to be a bodyguard, I'm 100% against it because I'm I'm past right. that, uh, right? But so working with them, you know, they're featured performers, right? They're always uh, very prominently placed. They're promoted very well, um, 
So to be around people like that is only a net benefit for me. Um, you know, iron sharpens iron. Uh, so I can grow as a performer being with them and working with them. They can grow as a performer, as performers working with me. And, and, and also, you know, like I said, uh, at first I get along with them, right? So it's not going to be, uh, you know, nails on a chalkboard, rolling my eyes. Oh, great. I have to go work with these guys. Like it, it's complete enthusiasm, right? Working with those two, right? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's like they're the type of guys. If I had my Carruthers, I would be working with them. And and there it's and there's more people than just them, right? But there are two. They're the an example of I'd love to be working with them, <clears throat> taking that act on the road. Excuse me, I'd love to yeah. take that act on the road. You know what I mean, I would have loved sure. loved that with with JT as well. Working worked with Jay Marsden for a little, right? Like all these people, I'm so lucky, and that's a credit to Merrick Brave and Alex McCarthy and a, and crotch and seth rollins of the type of people that they bring into the school train and put out into the wrestling community right a lot of good character uh good people right who are also good wrestlers um so this is the third time i'm being put um in a in a group or in a team and every time i haven't had any um complaints or second thoughts because they've all been good performers they they're each unique to each other jt mm -hmm. energy jay marston eric as knight they're all different from each other right which i also like you know what i mean so it's that it's different people so i can learn apply different creative skills grow as a performer but then truly enjoy my time as i'm around good people that i can trust right and enjoy mm -hmm. being with and shoot the shit with right and then have honest conversations honest feedback not have to look over my shoulder not have to second guess right it's uh, uh a great opportunity that i'm very much looking forward to oh for sure uh augustus i feel like we've barely scratched the surface uh, sur surface of everything we can talk about we could fill up probably hours upon hours upon hours of talking with you so very much want to have you back on the podcast but before we get you off the hook one thing we do we like to do every once in a while with uh, with our guests at card subject to change is put on our fantasy booking hats uh so i'm going to start by by asking you this it's a it's a question we ask a lot of people if there was one wrestler in the world past or present that you could get in the ring with and you cannot say bret hart because that's absolutely way too easy who would it be well my three favorite wrestlers of all time are bret hart aj styles and cm punk right so it would be aj styles or cm punk it would probably be if it's just for a one-off match aj styles if it's for a storyline or a program it would be cm punk I love those answers. I think that's brilliant. I would love to see any one of the those scenarios happen. I would uh, love to be. I would love to tune into all the promos to that uh, in that. <laughs> yes, that'd be, that'd be fun. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of meat on the bone there. A lot to sink my teeth into. For sure, for sure. The back and forth would be excellent. I I, I like that answer. Is there a is there a particular story arc that has happened in wrestling that? you can go back and say, man, I would have added this to that, or I would have been great being a part of that, that you can think of. So a storyline that I would love to have had creative input on would, have, would be the WCW, ECW invasion of the WWF, right? The most botched, poorly executed storyline <laughs> of all time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> right, so I would have loved to have been in the room for that, preferably with a baseball bat right uh, <laughs> yes you know uh something that was well executed uh that i just would have made like to have been involved in like creatively so something i would like to have been involved in as a character or do you mean involved in in like a creative booking capacity both oh what a lot like you said so my character i think would have fit in like a glove with the Raven Tommy Dreamer ECW feud, right? Would have loved to have come in there. Um, and that's just so well executed. That's one of the greatest wrestling storylines programs of all time of any company, 
right? It doesn't matter that it didn't have necessarily the national reach. It's creative influence, right? What creative influence uh, has um, is held in as high regard by performers and entertainment as the monetary successful people, right? You have your, you know, you hear the, your workers, worker, your wrestlers, wrestler, your actors, actor, you know what I mean? Um, yep. So I would love to fit in that. Um, a storyline that was good that I could have maybe tweaked to make better. That that's a that is a damn good question. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that maybe gets shit on that I think it isn't as bad as people remember it. Um, like maybe the initial NWO invasion of WWE, like up through okay. Mania. You know, if it definitely came, the wheels definitely came off and came off quick. Right, but I I think like maybe there like you just kind of move some pieces around. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, boy, that is a good one. You know the Nexus, right? Like you know, okay. being the voice in the room that tells John Cena, "Don't take a DDT on a concrete floor and come back and bury seven people." Uh, you know, <laughs> beyond repair, which is why Wade Barrett's on commentary now. Um, right. Because that was well executed up until that point. But I guess if Edge and uh, Chris Jericho couldn't convince Cena not to bury them six feet under, I guess no one could. Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm trying to think something. Maybe in like TNA, because I was a big fan of, of you know, of TNA 05, 03 through 2009, right? Okay. So, um you know, I was really big. That's and that's maybe something that's a little uh, something forgotten by time. Nigel McGuinness coming into TNA at the end of '09, feuding with Kurt Angle, uh, that was very well executed. I guess I would have liked to have been in the there to just help with the follow through. That would be a nice little oh, answer, right? You know what I mean? Like well executed absolutely. at the start. You know what I mean? Well executed at the start, and then he just kind of got lost in the shuffle. You know what I mean? Uh, so that would have been, you know, that's like kind of something in there where it's like that was good right the first two matches were good just needed some some follow through and that's uh that period of september 09 until january 2010 that's some of my favorite stuff ever especially post attitude era right for the longest time i would say tna uh september 09 till january 2010 was my favorite stuff uh post attitude and so that would be something i'd like to like plug into coming out of that time and just kind of there were so many pieces there that were so well placed and ready to go. I would have loved mm-hmm. to have, I guess, been there to kind of help with the follow through. Cause that's the thing with pro wrestling, right? You create a great moment, but then what's the follow through? Right. You know what I mean? So, yep. yeah, and that's why that's a great question. That is a great question. Right. And like, cause that is like, as a pure fan, that is what I'd like to go back and do, right? It's like what was a great moment, but then needed some follow through. And I, li- I kind of like those answers, right? Like when the NW came into WWE at first, oh man, what a hell of a moment. Just kind of needed a little more follow through. You know what I mean? And, yes. Um, yep. You know, the Nexus, great. You know, that when they tore down that ring, man, that's a great moment. Just needed a little more help on the follow through. And then kind of the same with the Nigel and Kurt Angle because Kurt didn't really do much after that either. You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of a lull until I think he got in there with the Pope or uh, Mr. Kennedy. Right? But there was kind of a lull there, too. So you had these two guys. They were the semi-main event back-to-back pay-per-views, and they're two of your top stars. But then they both kind of just, mm, you know, kind of go in, into the weeds. Kurt Angle's, of course, a, di- a whole different animal compared to, to Nigel McGinnis. But they just both needed a little more follow-through. So, yeah, that those would be my, uh, my three – uh, short story, long answers to your question. <laughs> Nick, do you have uh, do you have anything else you want to ask our uh, our wonderful guest before we? Uh, before no, we I wrap? caught I caught most of that. I caught most of that question. Um, I'm just happy there was a fellow Bret Hart fan on the show. That that made my night. Uh, <laughs> hey, I got to, a lot I can't of. Can't wait to dab you up and give you some kudos at the next show next time I see you. <laughs> I got a lot of love for Brett, but I'm a Shawn Michaels guy. Um, of course so, you are. 
<laughs> I know there had to be something wrong with the show, I'm right? In Shawn, no. I'm in Shawn Michaels. I'm in Shawn Michaels' country. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm sure all the SCW guys wouldn't have come on this show if you weren't a Shawn Michaels guy. They would have been no. like, "Oh, you're yeah. not a Shawn Michaels guy? I don't know if I could make that podcast, brother." Yeah. I don't know if that's, gonna work for you. that's not going to work for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I guess is before we go, hit us up with your socials. Where can we find you? online and also where can we find you in the coming weeks in the ring yeah so i'm at augustus draven on facebook on instagram on twitter slash x and on tiktok so just augustus draven one word um augustus draven at outlook.com is my booking or media email um so those would be where to find me on social media and then Next week, I will be at SCW, or I guess it's this coming Saturday, we'll be at uh, SCW Pro. I have a singles match against Shane Hollister. Um, always a, a pleasure for me, always a thrill. Where I was in the crowd for some of his highlights in AAW Pro, right? Uh, I was there for one of his matches with Kevin Steen. One of the best matches I ever saw in person was him versus Sammy Callahan. Um, when uh, Callahan was first going to NXT, that's one of the best matches I've ever seen live. So getting to work with him, uh, the thrill uh, is never gone on that. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. That'll be this coming Saturday in Bluegrass for SCW Pro. Uh, then there's, uh, we got next month, there's the two shows. We, there's uh, Prelude in Iowa City and then Epic. April 12th, I'm going to be wrestling uh, in Byron, Illinois, which is near Rockford. I'm going to get to wrestle. I'm going to have a, at least a few family and friends there, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I believe it's called the Battle of Byron. Uh, if I haven't shared that on my socials yet, I will be soon. Um, but it's a charity show. Uh, Mason Beck is kind of running points on that, uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that um, and getting to wrestle more. I'm I, I'm very much thrilled, right? Uh, getting to wrestle Shane Hollister and then getting to wrestle in front of my friends and family, which I haven't gotten to do that much, right? So I'm very much excited. 2023 has started off to be just a, a great year, right? Like I'm, I'm truly blessed. Pro wrestling has, uh, has done so much for me. I'm just so happy and grateful uh, for everything that Black and Brave and SCW have, have been able to do for me. And uh, 2023 is just starting off to be a great year. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this Saturday and then the coming weeks and months working with SCW Pro. Without a doubt. Um, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, I, yes, I, uh, you are welcome back anytime. Like I said earlier, I feel like we just scratched the surface. There's so yeah. much more that we can talk about, but also anytime you just want to sh shoot the shit about wrestling with a couple of old farts, you are more than welcome to come on in. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just reach out. I had a good time. <laughs> so yeah, just, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, reach out, to, yeah, reach out and we'll, we'll schedule for something in the future. Right. I'd Absolutely. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We have had Augustus Draven on. He's been fantastic. Uh, you have been tuned in to Card Subject to Change, the wrestling podcast for the fan, by the fan, powered by Lopez Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo. Next week on the show, uh, he is the renowned photographer of SCW Pro and many other Midwest promotions. Mr. Clint Dye will be joining us in the studio, anxious to get his perspective on wrestling. Yep. Uh, and then we're building towards WrestleMania, so stay tuned. We've got a lot, uh, a lot coming up in the coming weeks. Thank you for tuning in, Nick. Uh, for my partner, Never Wrong Nick Bull, I am the Wizard CZ. We will see you next week right here on Card Subject to Change. <laughs>